Process Improvement in Manual Lapping Process Pneumatic Automated Lapping System Abstract Industry 4.0 aims at automation of manufacturing processes in order to facilitate high production rate of good quality products. We present here an automatic lapping system which was designed for achieving surface flatness and airtight seal between the flapper valve and ram cylinder cover, that builds up pressure in the clamping unit of an injection molding machine. This automatic lapping system was designed in order to reduce human workload and to lessen the present time consumption in manual lapping process. In order to build an automatic lapping system, an oscillating mechanism was designed to limit the rotation of the flapper valve over the ram cylinder cover to an angle stated by the end user. A pneumatic source was chosen based on the availability to actuate the oscillating mechanism. We hope that this proposed design will increase the efficacy of lapping process when compared with previously used manual lapping method. Keyword surface flatness, human workload, time consumption, manual lapping method, pneumatic source, oscillating mechanism. I introduction. An injection molding machine consists of an injection unit, mold unit, and a clamping unit. Clamping unit is used to keep the mold shut against the forces developed, when the injection pressure pushes plastic into the closed mold. Therefore the amount of clamping force must be at least equal to the amount of injection force. The clamping unit is actuated by an hydraulic cylinder, which is directly connected to the hydraulic pump. The clamping unit consists of a suction flange cover assembly, which is composed of flapper valve and ram cylinder cover. When the oil enters the ram cylinder cover, it pushes the ram forward which in turn moves the moving plate and keeps the mold shut against the forces developed by the injection unit. The required clamping force which has to be at least equal to the injection pressure should be given by the clamping unit throughout the dwell time. At the end of dwell time the oil is released from the ram cylinder cover and the mold is opened. Since a steady clamping force has to be given by the clamping unit against the injection force, the oil which is taken in between the flapper valve and suction flange cover assembly should not be released throughout the dwell time. Hence it is very important that, there should be a good surface finish between the flapper valve and ram cylinder cover. At present, in order to achieve a good surface finish between the two sub-assemblies, a manual lapping approach was followed. 2. Methodology A Problem Definition Manual lapping process, is done between the flapper valve and ram cylinder cover using a rotator. It takes up to 200 manual rotations of flapper valve over the ram cylinder cover by applying manpower. It takes almost 2 days to complete the lapping process between all the available assemblies of flapper valve and ram cylinder cover. Fig.1 Manual Lapping Process B. Pneumatic Automated Lapping System Since the above problem defines the human workload and time consumption involved in the manual lapping process, there is a need created to automate this lapping process. In order to limit the movement of rotation to a required oscillating angle of 90 degrees by the end user, suitable mechanism was selected from the following technical analysis in Table I. An oscillating cylinder mechanism was selected for the lapping system from technical analysis. Pneumatic source is an easily available source for the end user to actuate this system. Hence the oscillating cylinder mechanism was designed in such a way that it is actuated by the available pneumatic source of 5 bar pressure. Table I Technical Analysis S.NO Solutions Merits Demerits 1. Single slider crank mechanism Simple in construction I. Difficult to achieve the required angle needed by the end user 2. Chem and follower mechanism Various angles and timing can be achieved 2. Construction is complex and requires more components 3. Crank and slotted lever quick return mechanism Work done is less 3. Slot may not withstand heavy loads 4. Oscillating cylinder mechanism Simple in construction and useless. Components. 4. Accurate angles cannot be achieved. See analysis on pneumatic cylinder. For the mentioned standard cylinder lengths, the actually required stroke lengths were calculated theoretically using AutoCAD software. Iteration 1. For the cylinder length of 240 mm. Fig.2 Stroke length calculation for cylinder model 1. Inference. The actual stroke length required is 100 mm. Actual stroke length available standard stroke length. Iteration 2. For the cylinder length of 290 mm. Fig.3 Stroke length calculation for cylinder model 2. Inference The actual stroke length required is 115 mm. Actual stroke length available standard stroke length. Iteration 3 For the cylinder length of 314 mm. Fig.4 Stroke length calculation for cylinder model 3. Inference The actual stroke length required is 120 mm. Actual stroke length available standard stroke length. From the following iteration cylinder of length 314 was selected since the variation is small between actual stroke length and standard stroke length. D. Technical analysis on pneumatic circuit. In order to automate the designed oscillating cylinder mechanism, we technically analyzed various pneumatic direction control valves to actuate the pneumatic cylinder. From Table 3. Mechanically operated toggle switch was selected to automate the double acting pneumatic cylinder. Table.3 Technical analysis on pneumatic switches. S.NO. Solutions. Merits. 1. Standard solenoid valve. I. It is versatile and adaptable. 2. It has fast response time. I. Availability of electrical source is mandatory. 2. 
the valve can partly close if the magnetic field isn't set up correctly. It is costlier. Two mechanically operated direction control valves, button switches. I, it is cost efficient. Two, it does not require electrical source. I, it cannot automate the mechanism. Two, it does not have fast response time. Three mechanically operated direction control valves, toggle switches. I, it can automate the mechanism. Two, it is cost efficient. Two, it is highly durable. Three, it does not require electrical source. I, it does not respond as fast as a solenoid valve. Fig.5 Pneumatic Circuit Figure 5 explains the pneumatic circuit which automates the system. Air from the compressor flow through the filter regulator lubricator, FRL. From the FRL, two tubes are connected to the input valves of 5 halves double external pilot operated valves and two tubes are connected to input valve of two 3 halves toggle switches. The output of 5 halves pilot valve is connected to two positions of double acting pneumatic cylinder. The output of 3 halves toggle valve is connected to the directional control of 5 halves pilot valve. When the air from the compressor passes to the FRL, it removes the dust from the compressed air. After passing through the FRL, the air is split to various valves through the tubes connected from it. All the valves is normally closed. When the rotator hits the 3 halves toggle valve at the 0, zero position, the toggle one is activated and allows the air to pass to the directional control of pilot valve, which allows the air from the input valve of pilot valve to the double acting pneumatic cylinder in BDC, bottom dead center, position. This process will make the piston to move from BDC to TDC and achieve a rotation of 900. Once the rotator reaches the 900 position, it hits another 3 halves toggle valve, the toggle 2 is activated and allows the air to pass to the directional control of pilot valve, which allows the air from the input valve of pilot valve to the double acting pneumatic cylinder in TDC, top dead center, position. This process will make the piston to move from TDC to BDC and achieve a rotation of 900. By this operation, oscillation of 900 is achieved. G components required for the system. Assemblies. I. Fixture. Fig.6 Fixture Design. It was designed in order to fix the suction flange cover assembly in a proper position. Other assemblies such as pneumatic cylinder, toggle switches are fixed to the fixture in proper location with the help of other sub-assemblies such as movable flange, fixed flange, and I-shaped structure. 2. Double acting pneumatic cylinder. It provides an oscillating mechanism to the flapper valve, by the repeated forward and return stroke by the piston. Fig.7 Double acting pneumatic cylinder design. 3. Filter lubricator regulator unit, FRL unit. Air from a compressor unit is allowed to pass through the FRL unit. The FRL unit splits the air between the two ports of the double acting cylinder. Fig.8 FRL unit. 4. Toggle switch. It is used for controlling and allowing the air flow through the ports of the double acting cylinder. When the toggle switch is pressed initially, air flows through the port near the bottom dead center of the cylinder. When the piston is actuated at the bottom dead center the pressed switch is reset automatically. Fig.9 toggle switch. Subassemblies. Fig.10 subassemblies. I. Rotator. It is used for rotating the flapper valve over the ram cylinder cover. It is linked in between flapper valve and the oscillating cylinder. 2. I-Rod. It acts as a joint between the rotator and the oscillating cylinder. 3. Movable flange. It is used for giving oscillating movement to the cylinder. It is connected between a fixed flange and the oscillating cylinder. 4. Fixed flange. It serves as a fixed support between the movable flange and I-shaped structure. V. I-shaped structure. It serves as a rigid support between the fixed flange and the fixture. It is used for filling the gap between the cylinder end cap and the fixture. G materials used for assemblies and sub-assemblies.